Hello, welcome to a special episode of Breaking It All Down. I'm Count Zero. Okay. Um, sorry about that. So, my initial plan for what I do for my episodes and how it's scheduling this is kind of gone out the window. Um, Nintendo's press briefing from today... Okay, that was obnoxious. Nintendo's press briefing for today basically was only half the picture. Um, I do apologize for the lighting. I'm recording this in the evening. Um, I didn't have an opportunity to record this earlier today because I was doing studying for classes and stuff. Um, anyway, Nintendo's press briefing from earlier today was basically half the story. They decided to withhold uh, most of their Nintendo 3DS stuff for a separate 3DS-focused press briefing tomorrow at 6 p.m., so I will watch that live and just do all the Nintendo stuff together because after all this is breaking it all down not breaking half down and giving you the other half later unless it will cause spoilers in which case I don't break the whole thing down because I want to spoil things for you because shut up anyway so it's instead when my f camera is not going in and out of voc focus dramatically I'm going to give to you a rundown of the three press briefings from yesterday. EA, Ubisoft, and Sony. And the camera's going to keep going in and out of focus because I'm recording this in the evening and I can't get really good straight up normal light. Even with the employment of another light in here. Um, try to get better light on my face. I guess, yeah. I have an LED lamp here which I'm using to try and kind of give some more light to this corner of my office room, but it doesn't work as well as it, but it, it, it's dying. I'll have to replace it. This is a vlog. I can be rambly and so forth and so on because this is a vlog and not a more formal, professional scripted episode. So there. Nya. Also, don't have to be as picky about the production quality. Because again, nya. Anyway. <clears throat> EA's press briefing. We start off with John Riccatello during the press conference. Weird little thing here as far as trends for the show go. Microphone noise. Lots of people coming out wearing lapel microphones and it's being all rustly and... So if I can try and capture this right here, we're using just... I have a handkerchief. Like that, kind of. Where I was waving a handkerchief rustling a handkerchief in front of the microphone. Hopefully they captured it properly. I do apologize also for dropped frames. Um, again, I don't, I'm being vloggy and informal and... Actually, maybe this will help the camera get a decent focus if I take my hat off. Nah, that breaks character. Hat stays on. Okay. Now you can see my, now you saw my hair. Um, so John Cotillo comes out He's rustling and making mic noise on his two microphones and introduces us to the preview of Dead Space 3. This game version of the game looks more action-packed than the last couple games. I will admit I haven't played Dead Space 2. I've played the first one. I like the first one for its, well, its isolation, its loneliness, the sense that you are on your own in the in this big space. There's no one to help you, no one to rescue you. Whereas here we have co-op. Uh, it sounds like you have um, cover-based shooting. You have I mean, what? Why do you have to even have cover-based shooting here in the first place? Um, but I mean, the, the other games didn't need it. They were found moody, not with mood and atmosphere, and creeping the player out. Um, this game is set on a planet instead of on space stations, so I'm not sure how we'll get our sections of um, zero gravity vacuum that we had before. 
um, you have a person following you around and wisecracking, which feels odd. Um, hopefully, this comes across. This game comes across as being closer to the crew from Alien as opposed to. Um, or, or the guys from Marines, as opposed to being Gears of War. I, I, I bring this up because I actually watched a marathon of all four Alien movies last weekend to prepare to go see Prometheus this weekend, and caught my attention. I looked in, uh, uh, well, Prometheus looks interesting, and with those movies, one of the things that got my attention is while there's a lot of isolation and with these films. Um, they do do a good job of having interesting characters. I mean, I was in before, I like them. The characters are all interesting. And the Lost Planet games don't have this collection of interesting characters. And if your teammates are written well and aren't just your squad of ultimate badasses here to protect you, if they are vulnerable, then that could be fun. That can make up for some of the pro some of my concerns. We'll see. Drop something on the floor. Pro professionalism, everyone. I'm prepared. I'm fidgeting with things off camera. So next we get some um, sports game trailers. We get Madden and FIFA. Madden is touted being powered by the Infinity Engine, which appears to be different from the Infinity Engine that powered Bio, uh, not Bioware, but Black Isles, and thus at the time Bioware's old any um anyways, but uh Dungeons and Dragons games like Icewind Dale, like well Icewind Dale was uh, Oblivion, not Bioware, but like the Baldur's Gate series, so. But because it isn't, uh, it's basically to do with how it handles player interactions and that sort of thing. They, for the trailer, they focus more on the big, hard tackles and hits, which, considering the NFL's focus on cutting back on concussions, seems odd. But I could see this being useful for other things like ball handling and evading tackles and that sort of thing. Um, we get a best guest appearance by Michael Irvin, whoever that is. Um, we get uh, a trailer for SimCity, which has multiplayer elements here. As far as you can share, you can have other people's cities be part of your world. Um, hopefully, allowing for some sort of asynchronous asynchronous multiplayer, where you when you save your game, it uploads your city to the cloud, and then your friends' cities um, are taken from that. I'm interested to see what they do with this, where it's going more on the multiplayer side, with, um, like, for example, city economies. Like, for example, oh, just think of some stuff. Um, Seattle is a trade-focused city. It has, it's a seaport. It has lots of incoming ships coming into their docking, and they have stuff coming from their city, which goes outwards. And it's to see like other cities handle that sort of trade. As far as like, okay, goods come in through come in through one city, they flow out to other cities. Other cities might have more of a service-based economy, or perhaps they have a manufacturing-based economy, and it has to do with raw materials coming from one place to another. And and you see how this goes. Will Wright, like Sid Meier, is a big picture sort of um, game developer. Where even they're doing sandboxy stuff like the Sim City games, I mean, Sim City originally was meant to be straight up a sandbox. He would, he couldn't just be oh, we'll just plunk down houses and draw streets and cars and then drop Godzilla in there to wreck the place. Uh, the game had you consider the whole big picture in terms of roads to other cities. As the game ship went on, you'd have power lines to other cities um, to share power to sell. A, extra electricity to them for additional revenue and so on. Um, roads to other cities led to new traffic in, more money in the economy, and that sort of thing. So with Sims, so with this new SimCity game, I hopefully this will play into that. 
Will Wright is not personally involved, I believe, in this game. But I hope they keep his kind of game design philosophy in mind when they make it, and the mindset when they develop this is, what would Will do? We'll see. Um, there, John McIntyre does give a brief shout-out shout out to Jason West and Vince Zampanella, which I can't help but feel is a little middle finger to Activision, considering that West and Zampanella settled their lawsuit with Activision, and either EA straight up won theirs, or or they also sell out of court to favorable conditions. But in any case, those two result lawsuits were settled, and things went very well for EA and for West and Zampella. And I keep forgetting the name of the studio they've started, but for uh, for them and their studio. <coughs> Peter, um... Then again, for a large chunk here, we basically get a whole bunch of stuff about our serv about EA services. Peter Moore comes out to talk about the origin service for game ordering. Again, I'm really sorry about this fading in and out of focus. I wanted to get this out tonight. I should have gotten this done earlier. I apologize. Um, anyway, Moore talks about origin. We have a guy named Patrick Bach who comes out to talk about the Battlefield 3 Premium Pack, which is basically EA's version of Call of Duty Elite. Um, somebody from Bioware, I didn't catch who, came out and talked about Star Wars The Whole Republic. Basically, we have more content incoming. Please download it and please subscribe. Um, they'll be having levels 1 to 15 going free to play. We'll see if they decide to go the whole free to play route like um, Cryptic and Perfect World has been doing for quite some time. I mean, if they go all free to play, that's perfectly fine. I won't consider a failure of their MMO if they do decide to go free to play. And I hope that other people will, will similarly not consider it a failure, because it's not. Honestly, I think the way the MMO market is going, microtransaction is more of the way to go. Microtransactions with options to subscribe to get this stuff um, at basically a discount. Possibly even depending on your MMO, maybe a lifetime subscription option. Actually, I think the way things more should be going more for MMO launches would be um, giving people who pre-order and early adopters an opportunity to get a lifetime subscription to get an early revenue flow early on. Then for the first few, the first year or so, going with a maybe month, first few months to a year going through a subscription option, and then depending on how things go, from there deciding whether to go with a free-to-play. I think probably going to free-to-play, everyone, I think everyone's going to be going free-to-play at some point, unless you are Activision, who wants to have a giant bin of money to roll in. And by the way, I think how Activision's money is probably kind of gross and you. I want to know where, um where they've been putting it. Anyway, uh, speaking of responses to Activision titles, there's Medal of Honor Warfighter, which is going more international. We see a little gameplay demo of a raid on a pirate base in Somalia. Um, there's an, aside from just the regular shooting gameplay, we have a RC drone sequence as far as the remote-controlled vehicle, as opposed to on the ground with wheels as opposed to a uh, like a flying pilotless drone. We kind of got some of that with, with uh, Modern Warfare 3 which I am going to review. Don't worry. It will get reviewed, but that's in the future. Um, but that gameplay looked interesting. Um, there's a trailer showing off the multiplayer which is set to Lincoln Park. Um, Yeah. <sighs> They're still the thing? I mean, I'm sure they have their fans, and I apologize if I'm insulting their fans. Though, hey, a controversy creates link, creates uh, video views, which creates cash. But, I remember when they were the new thing back when I was in high school. And that was in like 2001. That was 12 years ago. I'm not saying, it feels weird. Um,. But since they're still subject matter for their music is still pretty much the same. Uh, we get more FIFA, little gameplay stuff. 
Also, here's the thing: is EA has the UFC license now. Um, the kind of a certain degree of humor to this. On the one hand, EA and UFC have had a rough relationship. Dana White particularly said some nasty things about EA. Not quite about EA's mother, but just about EA. On the other hand, EF's, EA's MMA did well, but UFC basically bought out every single independent provider that EA had to deal with. Um, as it stands now, the only way that EA could do a EA MMA 2 would basically limit them to just Japanese mixed martial Japanese and um, East Asian Pacific uh, Pacific Rim mixed martial arts promotions, and even not all of those, because since EA since um, UFC owns Pride, they have like not like that wasn't Zero One, but whatever. Like there was there was a MMA promotion related to Zero One. Um, K1 boxing, but yeah, to basically you're stuck with Japanese, maybe some Thai, if there was any actually organized Thai promotions, uh, promotions from Thailand for Muay Thai competitions, you'd have them, and you, and maybe there's some stuff in Brazil related to the Gracies that the UFC doesn't own lock, stock, and barrel, but I'm not sure who they, they own. Um... So, sorry about that. So, yeah, I do wonder if whether this deal was UFC really wanted to sign a deal with EA to have them make their other games because they were impressed with EA MMA, or how much of this is EA had no choice if they wanted to make a sequel because there was no one else to sign to, sign to deal with. And honestly, if the Federal Trade Commission were to, oh, I don't know, do an antitrust investigation into UFC for monopolistic practices by purchasing all their competition and either shutting them down or merging them with themselves by having their titles defended in UFC, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, yeah... UFC is keeping Strike Force activate active and that sort of thing, but I do kind of wonder that the re if the reason that UFC is keeping Strike Force activating active isn't because they want to, as much as if they do, Dana White will have to answer some awkward questions on C-SPAN. If you catch my drift. Um. So there's that. Trailer for Need for Speed Most Wanted, which looks interesting. Um, I got some gameplay for that too. It's an open world racing game. A lot of the stuff from those games has come back in terms of having to find cooldown locations, and in addition to once you win the race, doing uh, maybe the possibility of police evasion after the fact. Uh, looks to be fun. Um, the those games have a few problems in terms of you would soup up your car to be able to compete with future races, but have pro but if your car was confiscated, you'd be in a situation where you have no car that can handle the new races, but you, you might have one which have old, which could handle older races, but that you already beaten before, but because you've beaten those, you don't get as much money, and things get tough. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I hope that will turn out well. It's Criterion. They've been successful thus far with making quality racing games. And we see some cry uh, Crisis 3. I really don't care. Um, I have decided uh, that the publishers who have come out and said um, that they want the next generation of consoles to lock out or ban used games are publishers. I will not financially support through the purchase or rental of these of their games, and I don't pirate console games or PC games, so I'm not going to play them, not going to review them. Didn't get my time and money. Crisis has done so. Um, Crytek, who publishes Crisis, or who's developed Crisis, has done so. They are on my 
They are on my list. Um, Quantic Dream, who did Heavy Rain, has done so. They're on my list. And of all the people, um, at least they're kind of deceased now. Um, but the developers of um, Two Human and um, Eternal Night Sanity's Requiem, Silicon Knights, other Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem, Silicon Knights, have also come out um, in favor of banning used games, which bugs me. But frankly, them because they made their reputation due to the cult success that was built out of Eternal Darkness. We're at a point now with video games where used games are the main way that a title will have a long tail and a reputation can be built up for a publisher and for their next titles. It was like this with um, Double Fine where the long tail of used game sales for Psychonauts built up a reputation which was carrying built enough a reputation for Tim Schafer and Double Fine to lead to people being hyped for Brutal Legend and for being hyped for basic for basically all of the downloadable titles they put out in the past few years like um, stacking and Iron Brigade and all that other sort of stuff help that some of these games help help the kids are really fun but you have to build up that but you have to build up a uh, cachet build clout if you're rare you need to have well I mean, Rare isn't the best example because Rare, if you really look at what they've developed, they have a really mixed history. A lot of the old LGN, LJN games, which the angry video game nerds refer to as the rainbow of shit, have, were, were developed by Rare. Anyway, I'm digressing. Crisis 3 looks pretty, great water effects, whatever. I'm not playing it or reviewing it. And that's, that's EA. Handwritten notes. Yep, I just do, I do that. Ubisoft press briefing started a little late. Um, we sat with Just Dance. Get big dance numbers, including moves like Jagger. I imagine that if Todd in the Shadows, um, fellow internet critic, was watching that this press conference, he probably subcon he probably just reflexively face palmed. Um, we have let's see here. We'll get rapping by Flo Rida. No idea who that is. I mean, I've seen pictures of him, but it wasn't really memorable. Rapping isn't my thing. Well, there isn't a lot of hip hop that is my thing, and of, of the stuff that is, I don't think Flo Ride is part of it. Um, let's see here. We also have the hosts of Aisha Tyler from uh, Archer and Tobuscus, a internet celebrity. Now, admittedly, as someone who wants to become an internet celebrity, I shouldn't be faulting him for being included in this because he has hit the big time. But I also want to be an internet critic and a game journalist. And if I were to be offered a spot at Ubisoft's press conference, as much as I wouldn't mind the money, it would jeopardize. It would, it would basically hurt my integrity to say yes. Um, it hurt my integrity to basically go out there and kiss their ass. So, I also it doesn't help. He's kind of obnoxious. He's a little over enthusiastic for my tastes. Um, but anyway, let's talk about the games. We get Far Cry Free, and you know, this tra th this gameplay sequence went straight into awkward because we start off with the conclusion of what appears to be a first person woman on top sex scene with a topless woman with only body paint above the waist leading to Ubisoft for the rest of these press briefings being referred to on Twitter as varying as for example Boobisoft and various other names branching off of that making fun of them for having boobs in their press conference. And to be fair, we are not yet at the state in the game industry where I think, I mean, as much as we'd like to handle sex in our games in a reasonable manner, like reasonable, responsible, 
mature manner, as with things like Catherine to a certain ex games like Catherine to a certain extent, this isn't how to do it. And I mean, ultimately, all of the the performances in terms of by Miss Tyler and by Toby in the press conference play much more up towards the sort of frat boy. Um, I don't think I'd say bro, but the more jocular, immature aspect of the gamer situation with, for example, Miss Tyler, Aisha, describing, saying that Far Cry gave her a lady boner. Um, presumably, the way she described it was the killing dudes gave her a lady boner. Like, which has its own level of unfortunate implications. But, I mean, that's the level of discourse we're at here. We're not shooting for maturity and discussion of games as art, as that sort of thing. That said, there's a cat outside of my door. Um, that said, um, Far Cry does, Far Cry 3 does seem like it goes m very heavily into the Heart of Darkness um, Apocalypse Now route. Far Cry 2 also kind of did this, but because it was doing the open world multiple faction thing, that to a certain extent kind of got in the way of it, uh, of stuff. I didn't play it, so I can't say for certain, but this is what I picked up from third party, from what I've heard about Far Cry 2. I need to play Far Cry 2. So, but anyway. Um, the villains like to taunt you over PA systems. Uh, he also likes to drug you and lead into really trippy dream sequences, which has you getting into your character's sort of, I guess, head. Additionally, your main character will speak, which is a nice touch. And that's one of the things I liked about Call of Duty Black Ops 1 is that your main character talked a lot, um, the character you were playing. And so th this really allowed you to, to get into his him as a character as opposed to just a uh, a player avatar for lack of a better term um, but yeah we'll see how this goes the, the villain like villain Fa Foss he sounds like he might be more Kurtz like except well a more energetic Colonel Kurtz as opposed to the sedate your assassin sent by grocery clerks um, uh, villain Kurt of uh, Kurtz of um, the Marlon Brando had in Apocalypse Now. Fortunately, the only adaptation of adaptation of Heart of Darkness we really have is Apocalypse Now, so we can't. If I want to compare Brando to, we'll see. We get more info on the new Splinter Cell game, Blacklist. Sam apparently isn't with Third Echelon. He's with a group called Fourth Echelon. Um. There have been terrorist attacks on the White House, or unless that relates to the end of conviction when the White House was assaulted by the Mercs, which I talked about in my review. I don't know. Um, a lot of questions posed about the narrative. Not a lot of answers. Looks like it's the same president, female president from last time. Maybe. Or maybe not. Maybe that's the chairwoman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Or the head of Third Echelon. Fourth Echelon. Whatever. Um, confused Count is confused. Um, trailer for the new Avengers game. Um, Avengers Battle for Earth. It looks kind of Marvel Ultimate Alliance-y, maybe. Because we're seeing a large selection of Marvel heroes here. Although the main characters they, they feature are well, the movie Avengers n wearing the comic book costumes as far as we have Hawkeye wearing the purple and that sort of thing. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, we didn't, didn't have any gameplay, really, but it, it's got that um, sort of brawly lots of characters from all over the Marvel Universe thing that we got from Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Uh... You look at Rayman Legends for the Wii. Uh, apparently, it supports five-player co-op. Um, I'm not quite sure how 
how this will work with the um, ours doing any funky Wii U touchpad stuff. But I do like the idea of having a five-player co-op on a game. I'm interested to see how this will work. Um, so here there's a game called Zombie U that is coming out for the Wii U. We saw more about this at the Nintendo press conference, and I'll talk about that more tomorrow. Um, but here's the trailer. And it just it says Havoc being wrecked throughout London. Sl no gameplay in this trailer, just slow motion stuff. All set to God Save the Queen. Released in time for the Diamond Jubilee. Classy. I mean, the only way they could... They're probably gonna get complaints. I mean, they actually went and apologized in advance before the press conference began. I'm not sure for what, though. I mean, was it the boobs? Was it the use of God Save the Queen during the Diamond Jubilee? And at least... They didn't offend everyone they could have with this. They didn't have... They were good and did not use the rebellious Scots to quell verse. Um, yeah, they had the whole song. Who uses the whole version of a national anthem anymore? Uh, but yeah, the whole song in there. And sheesh. So, yeah. That's a game. We'll see how that turns out. We are random upcoming Wii U titles... Most of the stuff we've seen before, um, they re-ran the same trailer during the Nintendo press conference. I'll get to complaining about that with that press conference. I'll get another Assassin's Creed 3 trailer, which looks interesting. Um, leading into gameplay with Tree to Tree free running and idea of how that will look. And it looks interesting looks fun. It, I'm glad to see that they managed to give this a thing that makes it enjoyable to watch and a good flow to it. In fact, it actually looks like I can't speak. It actually looks like the tree to tree free, free running will have a better r flow to it than some of the house to house roof to roof free running from Assassin's Creed 2 did. We'll see. Um, let me get an assault in the British fort. Uh, it looks like they are keeping in mind the loading time of muskets. Um, what we have happen, for example, is in the demo, um, Connor, the main character, attacks what this great paper He's attacking some soldiers outside of the fortress, and there's two, like two in front of the, the line of soldiers, or the, the mass of soldiers. He attacks them, grabs one as a human shield, um, while the ones behind the while the, the main mass, like about like 20, about platoon, um, 2015, uh, form up into two ranks and fire a full volley, which is what a disciplined group of soldiers would do, so props to them for that. And because Connor has the soldier as a human shield, he goes, um, the soldier he's holding goes down. At which point, Connor can then get into, gets into it with the other soldiers. Never mind the fact that the human shield thing wouldn't really work for stopping bullets. Um, they already covered this in Mythbusters. But anyway, Connor holds a guy with a human shield. The soldier he's holding dies. Connor goes into, with, into it with the other soldiers, and the other soldiers aren't firing another volley that quickly because, I mean, as Sharp made it clear, if you've seen the Sharp's Rifles series, uh, even during the Napoleonic Wars, you're firing really fast if you're firing three rounds a minute. And that requires discipline and a lot of qu and a lot of training at quick reloading. If you have a guy running into your ranks and wailing into you in melee combat, you don't have that anymore, and the game does a good job of reflecting that. I'm glad the game handled that well. Um, so, the combat looks... everything else looks very Assassin's Creed-ish. Um, the whole sequence looks good. We had a demo shoot mania with a bunch of male gamers going up against a bunch of female gamers from the frag called frag dolls. The guys won. There was only one round of combat, and the game looks kind of like a combination of Counter Strike and Quake Three in the sense that the weapon selection is very Quake Three ish, the people fighting with rail guns and that sort of thing. But the way it was set up, it was a it was a one round death, rather one death 
elimination thing, like Counter-Strike. Um, I do hope that when the game comes out, you have options for otherwise calibrate setting up your maps, like, for example, um, number of deaths in a five-minute time limit, or number of kills in a five-minute time limit, because this looks like your rounds could go really fast, because it has the fast pace, you get hit, your the fast-paced combat and movement and mobility of Quake, but it also has the if you're shot once you're dead aspect of Counter Strike. So, I, and you're out, and when you're dead, you're out for the round aspect of Counter Strike. So it'd be weird to see how this goes because on one hand, rounds will be really fast, which fits into the track main, the track mania thing. If you watch track mania being played on Giant Bombs Thursday Night for Throwdowns, or if you played it yourself, we'll see how this goes. Um, Finally, we had a new title from a brand new title, a brand new franchise from Ubisoft called Watch Dogs. Um, the game involves it's an open world game. It's set in the not too distant future. It's, the idea behind it is um, there's like a basically a sort of don't see totalitarian, but big brother's computer that's watching everything. And the game is based off a lot of the concerns people have about social media and um, how the concerns that while we are so very interconnected, a lot of this inform a lot of our information is available and out there and possible for people to use it against us. Uh, it's this big long spiel thing they did before the before this on uh, the press conference. I'm not sure how to feel about this. Science fiction when it comes to being depicted in any form, particularly video but particularly games and films, tend to fall into two camps. Either the future either the future is bright or the Frankenstein aspect. Frankenstein aspect being Scientific progress will hurt us. Um, scientific progress, no matter what it is, no matter how good our intentions are, will ultimately bite us in the end and destroy us, no matter how hard we we try to plan against this. And it's a very dark Luddite take on things. It, it's like the idea of saying, well, the steam train makes it easier to move goods and services around and is brought to a new interchange of cultures like and ideas that never existed before, but then arguing against it that, well, but the steam engine was all, is a terrible thing because it makes it easier to spread disease and contagion and uh, across the world and makes it easier to move armies, causing wars to be bigger and global in scope than ever before. This is true, but this does not automatically blight the steam locomotive as a technology. Um, so, on the one hand, I'm glad the game has ideas behind it. I'm glad the developers can put some thought into the ideas that pushing that they're pushing with this game and put them together to form something. It's just, I'm not totally in agreement with the ideas that they are putting forward in this. And it looks like these are actual ideas that they hold or, think, or at least think are significant as opposed to, well, like the deus ex aspect, original deus ex aspect of let's dump all the conspiracy theories in the blender, sprinkle in some cyberpunk, hit, stick, it, stick the lid on, hit frap, and then enjoy the delicious game margarita that comes out afterwards. Um, so we'll see how this goes, but we'll see how this goes though. I do like that the science fiction game is taking advantage of science fiction as a medium and, and putting the thought of putting some futurism in there. Um, if the story is executed well, I will still en I will enjoy it, and I might even push for it to get oh this push for it to get a Hugo nomination, maybe in best related work or something. Because I think if a good video game comes, science fiction video game comes out, progresses the story in, in an interesting fashion. I'd like to see that get a Hugo Award. Or at least nominated for the Hugos. Um, <clears throat> and holding up on Nintendo for till tomorrow. So we go to the Sony press briefing. Really long montage to start. Like 5-10 minutes, I think. Or felt like it. Um, leading to Jack Trenton coming out. And... Biz talking about how people like me will tear apart the press conference. Or break it all down, if you will title drop. Um, but we also get a little nod to Kaz Harai, who's in attendance and who's not on stage this year because he is now the head of Sony. How about that? The Kaz is all grown up. 
mean, the guy who came on stage and tried to hype us up for Ridge Racer going, Ridge Racer, and all that other stuff. This guy we, we've somewhat reverently made fun of for years has finally become the head of Sony as a company. <sighs> Damn. Anyway, David Cage comes out and to talk about his new game. And again, he talked shit about used games and called for the next generation of consoles to lock them out, so I'm not really too interested in what he's selling. I'll think about this. All the developers who have noticed who pushed this have been European. Um, what is, is this a Europe thing? Is this a... Um, the, the idea of European developers are more interested in um, taking away right, taking a, basically taking rights away from consumers in Europe as far as right of first sale, the, the right of, the right or the right of resale and that sort of thing. I don't know. Um, oh, there's a Europe focused thing. I mean, gamers in the U.S. online will say, "Oh, GameStop was a horrible thing," and we'll kind of back some of the stuff, but they don't have the and with a certain degree of ferocity. But it's not the develop. But no American developers are, say, are saying this. Is there not the same used stuff industry in Europe? You think there would. I mean, there's antiques, you have old bookshops, all this other sort of stuff. It, I, it's weird. Do you, like, not buy used cars in Europe? I don't know. Somebody from Europe, post in the comments, post in the comments about the used stuff situation in Europe. Anyway, they have a new game coming up called Beyond, which involves life after death. I don't know. They're, the main character is played by Ellen Page. Uh, it was an Academy Award nominated actress. We see some cutscene stuff, but no gameplay. Um, the cutscene stuff we see doesn't have show Ellen Page doing a lot of acting performance as far as her character. We see combat, we see a little bit of combat stuff, but I'm not, and she had this poltergeist ghost thing that follows her around, but we don't go too much into the plot aspects of that. I understand they're holding off on this for later, because they want to preserve some mystery for you to get the game, but I'm not quite sure how this works. Um, anyway, we get a gameplay demo of PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale, which is their um, Smash Brothers version thing. Um, we see a gameplay demo with Fat Princess, Sweet Tooth, Kratos, and Sly Cooper, with uh, the player playing as Fat Princess winning, and with some other characters who are in this, including Nathan Drake, Parappa, from Parappa the Rapper, nice seeing him in something again, um, Ratchet, and the bit and a big daddy from Bioshock. I'm interested to see who else they include in this uh, for other characters. Cause that, that's eight. I'm definitely need more than that. I'm hoping Solid Snake. Solid Snake has had a big, big, long presence. Uh, the Metal Gear series has a big presence on Sony platforms, even more so than it has a Nintendo. And Snake appeared in Smash Brothers. Um, wouldn't mind seeing some Square characters involved in this as well. Possibly Cloud. If we're going back to PlayStation stuff, then some then Cloud Strife would fit. Um, we also get a bunch of um, Vita stuff, using some app kind of things. Weird bit here is Vita's getting YouTube. Nothing said about the PS3. Um, that seems weird. I mean, Microsoft has a YouTube app. I think I, I can understand getting a mobile app, YouTube app for the Vita, but why not on the PS3? Especially if you can manage to make your YouTube app better than Microsoft's app. Hell, the the Hulu apps and the Netflix apps on um, on the PS3 are far, far better than. The uh, Microsoft, the Xbox 360 versions. I'd love to have a YouTube app on this, which would be better. Um, that would be my Microsoft app. 
Because that way, if I want to have the computer turned off or something, I want to watch YouTube on my TV. That um, that'd be a great way to do that. And we'll see. Uh, Assassin's Creed 3 is getting a spin-off title. Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation with a female main character. It's set around Louisiana. Um, seems odd. It looks like the antagonists in this are British. But from what I recall, Louisiana at the time was held by the French still. Um... The Louisiana Purchase, under the Jefferson administration, was from the French government, unless there's some weird political stuff that I missed in my history classes, like the British held it for a while, and then when they were kicked out during the Revolutionary War, the French came back in and reoccupied it or something like that. But I don't recall anything like that from my his colonial history classes, um, American history classes, but the main character is female. I don't know if she's African American, Af well, or of African descent or not. Yeah, you could possibly be straight up African because the slave trade was just still going on in terms of, for lack of a better word, importation. Um, I'm getting, I'm rambling. Um, Ubisoft came back, or Boobisoft came back to show some more Far Cry 3 with four-player co-op. Um, interesting thing about this gameplay demo is the four um, members of the dev team they had on stage showing off the game were doing a lot of communication. I mean, normally when they do this sort of four-player demo stuff, usually they've been trained using... I can't speak. Usually they've been doing this so often that they have don't communicate much on stage. Um, or if they do, it kind of feels like they're doing a show of communication as far as like a little bit of discussion here and they're like, oh, get that guy. Here, there's a lot of, there's real communication here. They sound like real people playing a game together. It sounds like a, sounds like I'm making a mountain out of a molehill to be saying stuff like this, but you rarely get this sort of thing in a E3 gameplay demo. That It's nice to get what we've been getting before, what we got here. Um, so, there's that. Looked good. Um, then, for a large chunk of the demo, we had a look at the Wonder Book, which is an alternate reality game or a bunch of collections of alternate reality games for PlayStation Move. It's basically a book which has looks like it has stuff on it, which then creates images on the screen, either something you're interacting with in the real world, or trigger a certain gameplay programming stuff. Maybe tied to a specific disc in the thing. Maybe there's a code with the book that you enter and you download something. It's not made clear. The first game they're doing with this is um, done with J.K. Rowling, The Book of Spells. Looks like it ties into the Harry Potter universe, maybe. Oh, we'll see. They spent a lot of time on this. A lot of time. Let's talk about the PlayStation Mobile platform, which is their stuff with tablets and uh, smartphones and that sort of thing, where they'll run PlayStation stuff, possibly while well, some of them are still like Android devices, but they have their own operating system. Uh, we get some gameplay for God of War Ascension. I'm not a fan of the God of War series. I don't care about this game. I find Kratos unlikable. Not only is The Last of Us. Which we had some gameplay of this. The these destroyed worlds look really, really interesting. I really like to know how this catastrophe came to pass. Um, how things got the way they are. The sequence here has the main characters fighting off uh, other scavengers. So. I think an earlier gameplay demo had some monster stuff in there, but or the earlier trailer had monster stuff in it, but this is very different. So we'll see how this turns out and how much they how long it takes to get into the fantastical aspect of things or the supernatural or science fiction or whatever. And that's it, actually. Um, I mean, one thing, one other thing about Last of Us: the characters in this do not look as well skilled in combat as Nathan Drake does. Um, which fits with the way they are depicted, with the way their characters are. 
um, there's a you do a stealth takedown in this gameplay demo, and it takes you your guy like a good 15 seconds, 15, 20, or 30 seconds to choke this guy out. It felt like when, we, when gameplay terms be forever, and it feels and looks painful and uncomfortable and awkward, sorry, awkward but it looks it's tough. It looks makes it look much it looks, it makes it look difficult for the character who's doing it, which is good. It makes for a nice change from your action movie level of gameplay stuff where your stealth take down this guy comes up and <coughs> snaps the neck in one smooth motion and we carry on. Um, so that's fun. And that's the end of the thing, which makes um, The Last Guardian something which Capcom, but Sony has hyped it two years ago as something that's coming, still AWOL because it was missing last year as well. Also, no new information on Grand Theft Auto V. There might be stuff on the sh on the show floor, so I'll be watching gameplay demos and st stuff from uh, game trailers and other places, but nothing seen here. So that's it for Sony, and I've gone on for about an hour, um, but I covered more stuff than I usually do. And tomorrow, blank page ready for the Nintendo. 3DS press briefing, at which point I will give you my thoughts on all their Wii U stuff and 3DS stuff that is coming up in 2013, in 2010, uh, 2010, we're in, that's past, 2012 and 2013. So again, I'm Count Zero, I'd like to apologize for the fading in and out of the focus, and dropped frames, and a lack of preparedness, and all the ums, hums, haws, and other stuff I've done thus far, and... I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Again, this is not a standard episode. This will be a vlog. Once E3 is done, which will be next week, I will do a proper episode with a top 5 to 10, depending on how much stuff I get together, of the show. And I'll see if I can find myself an another shame of the show. See if it's something that compares to last year's Blackwater. So until next time, Thanks for watching.